Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today for another round um, in our watercolor sketchbook. Today I am feeling very folk arty, very patterny, and that is what I'm going to do. So we are going to do some kind of folk art inspired um, trees, whimsical, lots of patterns on them. And this will definitely be mixed media because I'm going to be pulling in, let's see, my Posca pen here. So I have a Posca, a white Posca pen. I have some Micron pens, some archival ink Micron pens, pencils. We don't need those right now. That's my brush. And I have this lovely gold Uniball pen. So this I do not think is waterproof. I'll be putting it on at the end because uh, I don't want to get it wet, but that's what we're going to do today. And let's get started. All right. So with my pencil, I'll draw out uh, here. Here's a 2H. Um, I'm going to draw out my composition here. So we are going to have a ground line. Just draw yourself in a ground line. And I apologize, you might be able to see a few little spots on my sketchbook page. I'm just going to ignore them for now. Um, and then we're going to do some very basic shapes. So they're going to be organic and have kind of soft edges, but they're just going to be soft shapes. Tall, roundish, you know, kind of things. So let's start with one over here all right so kind of blobby shaped i'm not going to get too i'm actually going to overlap this one this one will be more round and just don't worry about the overlap right now you'll take care of that in the next step let's do a really big tall one here and then i'm going to do two smaller Thin ones kind of next to each other and maybe one more on this side yeah there we go okay I'm gonna give these all trunks hmm I'm not sure I love that they're all the same height let's get our eraser really quick I've been needed eraser and all I'm gonna do is this one and this one. I am just going to bring down the height of these so it's a little bit more varied. Okay, there we go. All right, so now for the overlapping, you're gonna decide what is going to be in front and what is gonna be behind and get rid of those extra lines. So we'll put that one behind that one behind these will be in front so kind of the bigger taller ones in front and behind okay so let me draw this line back over here and if you want to uh, lighten up all of your lines at the end of this you can definitely do that and I'm also gonna throw in that moon that I love to throw in. So just putting a big circle up there, it's gonna overlap a couple trees, get rid of that line in the middle there. And then just lighten up the edges. Okay, I think we're ready to paint. So I'm actually gonna do a dark sky in indigo. Uh, and then we'll pick the colors of our trees. I have a silver black velvet brush here today. Uh, size eight and let's get to painting so I have my core paints I'm looking to see I actually have an indigo in here somewhere not in my palette normally here we go I don't know this might be all dried up all right I have some core indigo I don't have a lot of it left I often make an indigo light -like color with phthalo blue and paints gray. But there we go. We got some indigo out of there. So if you don't have indigo, which is a very deep navy blue color, um, go ahead and mix up something close with paints gray and a phthalo blue. All right, so I'm going to paint the whole background with this color. I'm actually gonna start down here. I am gonna paint over where the tree trunks are. All 
And indigo is a tough color. Any dark, dark colors can be tricky. Um, painting with them nice and juicy is good, uh, but often you'll have to put two layers on to get a nice even coat. Not worrying too much about the perfect ground line. Let's finish up in here. And don't worry too much about the edges of your trees. If it goes like a little in or a little out, they have these nice soft organic edges. So if you change the shape of it while painting the background, that's okay. It's quite all right. The one you do have to worry about a little bit is the moon. You do want that to be round. So let's painting up here. And I didn't give the, I'm painting right to the edge on these pages, which is fine. Um, usually I would outline it a little bit. with tape. I could have even gone with a slightly bigger brush, but then it does make it harder. It makes it easier to cover the large spaces, but harder to get into these little cracks. I'm gonna get as much of this done as possible, as close as possible. And then we're going to tackle this moon. All right, get a nice loaded up brush. To get around the edges. And if you really struggle with it, you could mask out your moon or at least the edges of your moon just so you can have a nice crisp edge. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. I'm actually going to come back down here, put in a little more color. It's all very dry down here already. I worked my way around. And like I said, if you want like a really flat wash on the edge of these like funky shapes, it's, it's tough. And it will look messy and sloppy right now. Have a little patience and grace with yourself and wait till you are able to put in the, um, the shapes, the trees themselves before you really judge it. You can always do another layer. All right, we're gonna let it dry. I know it's gonna be a little funky and you can purposely make it funky too. You can have like funky clouds and things like that. So, and of course I did so well and then I got this little bit of uh, blue in there, but I'm gonna forgive myself for it. If it really bothers you, you can always go in later on. I'm just gonna try to lighten it a little bit because this is gonna be gray in here later, so. I'm going to make it work. All right. I'm going to leave it alone and let it dry. Don't do what I'm doing. Okay. Let's let that dry. And then we're going to go and paint our trees. Oh, I forgot this spot in here. Oh. Forgive me, y'all. There we 
we go. And now we're gonna let it all dry and we're gonna come in and paint our trees. Okay, we're back and we're all dry and now we're gonna pick out some awesome colors for our trees. So I'm gonna start with a really nice orange. I'm gonna go with this um, Gosh, why can't I remember the name of it? All of a sudden, Quin Gold, duh. This is Quinacridone Gold. It's a beautiful burnt orange color. And I am going to paint these smaller ones this color. do this one over here this color drop in a little more color at the bottom I think So we have two quinacridone gold. Sorry if my microphone got a little messed up. Let's do, let me see. I am going to, I'm trying to decide if I wanna do green gold or sap green. I think I'm gonna do sap green with a little phthalo. Or a lot of phthalo with a little sap green, maybe. Yeah, this dark green color. Yeah. And I'm going to do that one in here. Drop in a little more color. Actually, I'm just gonna drop in some blue right at the bottom there. There we go. All right, so let's do another color. Um, let's do something more in the red orange family. So this is like super orange. I'm actually gonna take some cadmium red with some transparent pyrrole orange. So you can pick any colors you want. These are just the colors I'm picking. So I'm gonna start in here with this color. So really warm colors against this cool blue sky. Well, I guess except for the green. And you could definitely swatch these out ahead of time to kind of plan your color palette. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants today. And that's okay too. Sometimes you wanna fly by the seat of your pants and just see what happens. like this texture in here. I feel like I might leave it. Enhance it a little bit. There we go. Okay. And we have two more. I kind of want to do a blue, but I don't want it to be too close to 
So I'm going to take out phthalo here. I'm going to do this one. I don't want it to be too close to the indigo, right? So I'm going to use this really pretty color because I want the, when I use the gold later, I want something to put the gold on top of that really kind of stands out. And I think that's going to have to be this blue color. I mean, I could have done purple, but I didn't. Yeah, I think they're different enough that that will work. And these are all really dark, beautiful, rich colors. So I think it works well with this dark nighttime scene. It wouldn't quite have looked right, I don't think, if it was two light pale colors, if the colors were just not as rich as these. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to let those dry. I'm going to work on my moon here really quick. My water's really dirty, so we're going to see. And I have no clean. We're going to see what we get. I'm going to wet this hole inside of the moon. Be careful around my tree. Make sure not to activate the color. And then I am actually going to use indigo. I'm not going to use Payne's Gray. Like I usually use Payne's Gray, but I think I'm going to use indigo, like a really light amount. So taking the indigo, adding lots and lots of water. And I just wanted to see kind of how this indigo would work instead of the normal Payne's Gray. Maybe it's too similar. Maybe that the coolness or the difference of the Payne's Gray against the indigo sky is a better contrast, but I'm gonna give it a try and see how it looks when it's dry. So just popping in some craters and some funky things. There we go. Alrighty, now this green one here, I'm just going to go in and fill in a little bit more color around the edges. And anywhere else. Nope, I think I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to start to give it a little doodle. Okay. I am going to refine this edge, but that is still wet. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to refine this edge and we're going to get in there and doodle and put our uh, trunks on as well. Okay, that's dry. Let me refine this edge here. Because I think it just, it has to overlap the moon a little bit more to make that work. Yeah, that's a much stronger kind of thing going on. Okay, so now we are going to let some other stuff dry again. I'll start with the things that are already dry and we're going to start to add um, our designs with our Markers, our Posca pen, our Micron pens, our gold pen here, and see where we get. All right, so let's add in the trunks. I'm going to do those actually in Payne's Gray. Actually, no. Yes, no. This is so dark. I feel like I should do them in pen, but I don't know the pen is going to be dark enough. So I'm going to do really thin lines. This might be a mistake. You should check out to the end of the video to see if this is a mistake before you try it. Okay, 
So I'm going to do really thin lines here, but then all the interior stuff I'm going to do with the Posca pen or the Micron pens. All right, let's get that micro pen, that Micron pen out. So I'm going to start with these that are dry. These ones on the end here are all dry. All right, so let's see, these smaller ones, I'm going to, we're gonna come up, and I am using a size five micron pen for this. So I'm gonna do all of these kind of parallel lines, almost looks like a really big leaf stylized. There we go. Right, we'll add in some more stuff in a minute, but let's, I'm gonna do that for all of these smaller ones, I think. They're all gonna get kind of the same treatment. This side, they're a little more angled. But they're still gonna be parallel. You can see I'm doing a little swoop, a little swoop and swap, a little S-curve. There we go. And let's do the same on this one. This one I'm gonna do kind of the same idea, but I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna angle them down a little bit maybe, just to give them variation. Again, you can watch what I do all the way to the end and decide if it was a bad idea or not. These almost look like mustaches. There we go, okay. So those are done. They're all a little different. So I kind of like that. They're not trying to be perfect. All right, so let's, I'm gonna jump to this green one and we're gonna do kind of something a little reminiscent of like an apple tree. I'm gonna do kind of all these like forking branches off each other. And then, hopefully you can see that, I'm gonna add little dots or open, open circles like on the ends of them. And as I go, if I find, oh, I need another one right there, that, that feels better, you can add them in. And I am gonna come back with gold and white to add some more to these things. If it's better for you to kind of switch up your supplies and do a little white, a little, you know, on each of them, instead of just sticking with the pencil or the micron pen, you can definitely do that as well. All right, this one we're going to do more like swooping. branches and I'm actually going to double them. So what I mean by double, so I put them in, I'm going to put a parallel line right next to it, but really, really thin, like really close to it. There we go. Okay, one more to go. This one I think is gonna be the most complicated one. I think I wanna do like a big trunk all the way up the middle. And we're gonna do this on either side. Boop, 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 boop. So like a big, it almost looks like a feather or a big leaf. Okay, so all those lines, but then and you could definitely do this with a paintbrush if you wanted to, if you prefer that medium. 
I'm gonna make tiny little leaves parallel to each other down every branch and they are gonna be filled in. That's why it might be easier to do this with a brush and some paint, but I'm going to stick with this. And then my next step is going to be uh, switching my medium and going to the gold and the white and seeing where I can add embellishments that really add contrast and interest. Right now, this is a lot of fun. We could stick with just this, but giving it that third dimension of paint, ink, and like something else, I think can be a lot of fun. So don't forget while I'm filling this in, if you're still watching with me and haven't fast forwarded yet, uh, don't forget to like the video if you like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you aren't a subscriber already. If you are, thank you so much for being here and coming back. My subscribers are awesome. Um, also check the description for links to supplies and materials. And share this video with someone you think might also enjoy it as well. And then what else, what else? I'm trying to think of other things to talk about. I finish this and then, oh, also thank you so much to my super thanks contributors. You are the MVP superstars helping me continue to do what I do. Um, on a daily basis by providing that support. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know who you are. Okay. So we're done with all of our black ink. Let's get some gold and some white in there. So white on our little apple tree here. I'm going to add in some white dots throughout. There we go. And then I'm going to add gold to that one, I think. Um, on this one, I'm going to add some little white dots just to kind of inside each of these areas because my Posca pen is a little big, so I have to be really careful. That's fun. Oh, I like this. Put one up there. That looks great. Okay. And maybe that's it for the white. Maybe we might bring it back. Okay. Let's switch to gold. I'm going to put a gold line between these branches now. That is fun. So I did a double line here and I'm trying to get it to kind of go between those double lines. It's kind of just overtaking it. This gold is super strong and amazing and fun. Oh, it's like electric. All right. I'm just going to connect all of these and let's add on a few leaf flourishes. Just little doop doop. Yep. That looks cool. Okay. Eh, maybe one more up here. Okay. And then maybe I'll just do some dots on this one as well. Since it's blue, we'll add this gold. It shows up really nicely on here. I'm just doing single dots for these. There we go. All right, so, and now I have this white area down here, which was like my ground line. I could leave it just white as like snow. I'm gonna give it like a tiny little shadow on the bottom, I don't know. So I'm gonna take some of this indigo and I'm just gonna go this way from 
the base of these trees. Kind of across the page. And actually it should have gone this way if the moon <laughs> is shining on that side. I wasn't even paying attention. Mistake made. That's all right. We're living in a whimsical backwards world where things are opposite. This is opposite world. All right. So give these a little bit more substance at the top. These shadows as they get higher up. Okay, so there we go. We have some shadows. Beautiful. Let's take our little... This one I think needs to be a little bit wider. It's over here and it's overlapping with that one. They kind of need to overlap. There we go. That makes more sense to my brain, even though it's in the wrong direction. So... Make sure your shadows go the other way from wherever your moon is. All right, there we go. Our whimsical, fun uh, little tree line of these folk art type um, illustrations with some shadows and a big, bright, beautiful moon. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for joining me once again. I'm Shana Searcy, and I can't wait to see you for our next painting. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>